Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the personality factors and effectiveness of pickup lines. Another question here is, are pickup lines associated with specific personality characteristics like extroversion, agreeableness, or something like narcissism, or the other dark triad traits? So essentially all the research on the subject of pickup lines that I've found anyway is related to a male delivering a pickup line to a female and then the female judging how effective that pickup line was. So we don't really see a lot in the research literature about pickup lines. Now what I find funny about this is because it would seem that these lines are kind of unimportant but in clinical practice this concept actually comes up quite a bit. A lot of times you'll have clients ask you, what do I say? Like I'm in a bar, a restaurant, or somewhere trying to meet somebody. What do I say first? What would make the best impression? And some of the lines I'll be reading in this video are lines that I've been asked to evaluate in the past, right? To render my opinion on in terms of how effective I think they might be. Which of course is not always an easy question to answer because it really depends on the person asking and what they're looking for in a partner and some other circumstances. But either way, I'll kind of give my opinion on a number of the pickup lines I mentioned in this video. So pickup lines are phrases, like statements or questions, that someone uses in an effort to initiate a romantically oriented conversation, usually with the goal of engaging in a short-term or a long-term relationship. The pickup line usually occurs when two people are at what we call zero acquaintance. This is when two people have never met one another they've had no interactions with each other at all. So no face-to-face -face interactions, but no online interactions or other type of interactions, right? So zero acquaintance equals no acquaintance. Now the evaluation that occurs during the first few seconds of interaction I think is kind of important because during this period is when someone is going to make the decision to engage or repel the interested or approaching party. And it kind of sets the tone for the interaction as well, right? So it sets the lens. So now somebody's going to see the other person through a certain lens, kind of based on that pickup line. A lens that may give them a chance at building a relationship, and sometimes a lens that will not. Now because the research literature really focuses on, again, men delivering the pickup lines and women evaluating them, I'm going to use that here in this video. That's going to be the example I use. And one of the popular theories of mate selection suggests that women look for indications that a potential mate will be committed in a long-term relationship, and also that they'll be a good provider. So this means that what a woman is looking for can be reduced to two categories. Warmth, trustworthiness, right? So that is one category, warmth hyphen trustworthiness, which may be indicated by kindness, reliability, and honesty. And the other category is status resources, so status hyphen resources, indicated by earning potential, wealth, dominance, social status, and intelligence. The research tells us that women seeking long-term relationships tend to put these two categories above many other characteristics such as spontaneity, open-mindedness, creativity, a sense of humor, sociability, attractiveness, and having a romantic philosophy. This is again in long-term relationships, but what about short-term relationships? In these situations, women tend to elevate the importance of attractiveness and place less emphasis on trustworthiness, romantic philosophy, status, and resources. For example, we see a study where women who are open-minded to short-term relationships tend to favor someone who's attractive and untrustworthy over somebody who's average-looking and trustworthy. So the attributes that women rank as most important for finding a potential mate depend on the type of relationship that the woman is looking for. So now looking at some examples of pickup lines. Again, we see the topic has been studied in the research literature, but not a lot. But enough to where there have been certain categories of pickup lines that have been developed, and this has been shown to be the case in a few studies. So this finding was repeated over several studies. We see that pickup lines can be divided into three general types, flippant, direct, and innocuous. So flippant lines indicate that a man has 
and interest, and it uses humor. These are characterized by a flirtatious and sexual nature. So I'll give a few examples here, and again, with these examples, I'm going to offer kind of my opinion on the idea of whether this is a good or less than good pickup line, I'll put it that way. So the first one would be, the only thing your eyes haven't told me is your name. I don't think this one is too bad relative to some of the others. Next one, you must be tired because you have been running through my mind all day. Again, I don't think that one is really horrible. Next one here, do you have any raisins? No. Then how about a date? I don't like this one because it really has too many parts. And again, the little pun between raisins and date just seems simplistic. Shall we talk or continue flirting from a distance? I think this one is problematic because it's kind of presumptuous. Can I get a picture of you so I can show Santa what I want for Christmas? Uh, I think this one is particularly bad. I've heard this one a few times and uh, just too many parts and I don't know, it just doesn't work, I think, at a few different levels, but either way. Next one is, I might as well call you Google because you're everything I've been searching for. Interestingly, I don't think this one is as bad as it seems at first. Like at first this one's kind of a little revolting, but then as you look at it, it doesn't seem as bad as the one with Santa and Christmas at least. Good thing I brought my library card because I've been checking you out. Just having the words checking you out in a pickup line I think means that that one has to be discarded. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together, right? Uh, I don't think this one is too bad, right? At least it involves some sort of spelling and grammar. You know, it's a little bit interesting. You're so beautiful that you made me forget my pickup line. Out of all the flippant lines, I actually think this one is the best. Now again, I don't like really any of the flippant lines that much, so that has to be taken into consideration. But I think this one is at least connoting some sort of sincere component with it, right? So, you know, the beauty, the attractiveness level, kind of stunning to the degree where somebody forgets what they're going to say. Although I don't know if mentioning the word beautiful or really referring to attraction in a pickup line is a good idea. So that would be my problem with really all the flippant lines, right? A lot of them have some sort of link to appearance, and that's why I think they come off as a little narcissistic. So moving on to the direct lines. Direct lines communicate interest with flattery and sincerity. For example, you seem different, I like that. This one I don't think is terrible. It has a confident component, which could work in some situations, but of course not in others. It took a lot of courage for me to approach you, so can I at least ask your name? I actually think this is one of the better direct lines. It has a sincere component to it. I saw you across the room and knew I had to meet you. This kind of connects back again to beauty or attractiveness, so really this is not one of my favorites. I saw you and thought that I'll kick myself all night if I don't come over here and say hi. Okay, this one's not too bad. I feel a little embarrassed about this, but I'd like to meet you. What's your name? I don't think this one is really too bad. I think this is probably one of the better ones of this group. So really what we see here, again, with the direct lines, of course, is a direct approach in trying to get somebody to reveal their name, right? Which, of course, in theory, would start a meaningful conversation. Now, the third category involves the innocuous lines, and these are designed to minimize the pain of rejection. So they really don't emphasize a commitment to the strategy of trying to get a date, right? So they're kind of a little weak as a category, in my opinion. So they are questions that hide the interested party's true intent. So some innocuous lines would be, I've seen you before. Do you live around here? All right, that one's not great. What do you think of the band? Okay, I guess that's okay. Do you have the time? Right, this one is really indirect, right? So I'll talk about, like, a little later on, what I really think of these innocuous lines. I mean, they're not really my favorite. In general, they come off as a little bit Machiavellianistic, and they have some other problems, but I'll get to that. So in terms of long-term relationships, studies show us that innocuous lines and direct lines are more effective than flippant lines. We see that flippant lines often backfire. They're designed to impress women, but they typically fail to do that. Research shows us that women interpret flippant lines as positive in some ways, indicating that somebody's confident, funny, and more social, but they also point to some negative things as well. They tend to convey selfishness, irresponsibility, and promiscuity, which point to low trust. Women also tend to believe that individuals who use flippant lines 
demonstrate low intelligence. So innocuous lines are actually preferable to women more so than direct lines, which is a little bit surprising to me given some of the difficulties I have with the innocuous lines, but again, I'll get to that in a few moments. So what about short-term relationships? What happens here in terms of the categories? Well, interestingly, it doesn't matter what category of pickup line is used when pursuing a short-term relationship. Participants in studies were much more receptive to a potential mate if he was attractive, regardless of the category of pickup line that was employed, right? So that didn't make any difference at all. So should women be wary of the flippant lines? Well, the research tells us yes, if they are interested in long-term relationships and not short-term relationships. Men looking for long-term relationships tend to use honest and direct pickup lines. So again, the direct lines and maybe sometimes the innocuous. Men looking for short-term relationships tend to use pickup lines and tactics that are dishonest and manipulative. Timing also seems to be fairly important. If someone has a lot on their mind, this is called being in a state of cognitive depletion, like from stress, or they've already heard a bunch of pickup lines in that same evening, then flippant lines are disliked even more. So flippant lines, when combined with cognitive depletion, lead to a particularly low rating. The innocuous and direct lines do better than the flippant lines in a state of cognitive depletion. So what we see as well here is that physical attraction plays a very significant part no matter what somebody's seeking, long-term, short-term, or just a conversation, attraction increases the probability of engagement. This is referred to as the beautiful is good halo effect. However, when forced to choose between attractiveness and trustworthiness, women seeking long-term relationships tend to select trustworthiness. Now, considering all these findings looking at flippant, direct, and innocuous lines, we see they tend to point to this idea that humor is not valuable, right? Because the flippant lines contain humor and the direct and innocuous lines don't. But it's important to remember here that humor in these flippant lines is essentially comprising one-liners, right? They aren't really that funny or funny at all. The type of humor that is attractive is really more of a spontaneous wit, which is demonstrated repeatedly over time. It's interpreted as pointing to both intelligence and honesty. So a sense of humor is actually important, just not the type of humor that's allegedly contained in the flippant lines, right? Again, I don't think they really have much humor value at all. So my thoughts on all this from my clinical experience, well, my difficulties with the categories really have little to do with the flippant and direct lines. I believe those are distinct categories. I may not really like the flippant lines as much as the direct lines, but I do believe they're both real categories. My problem becomes around the innocuous category. Is this really a category at all? And I would say, I don't think it is. I know it's held up with certain testing, but I think my problem with it is once that line is delivered, something else needs to be added to express an interest in the person. So I guess what I'm saying is, does it really move somebody away from zero acquaintance? Technically, yes, because there's been some contact. But does it move somebody away from zero acquaintance in a meaningful way. So with that line, do you have the time? Say somebody answers, sure, it's 835. They're not any closer to a relationship at that moment than they would have been at zero acquaintance. Something still has to be said, again, to express a specific romantic interest. I mean, maybe it's a little better than no contact, but not really enough to be its own category. That's just my opinion on it. But if I were to run under the assumption that there are three categories, what would be my analysis of like the personality factors behind someone who uses a line from one of these categories? Again, this is a tendency. It doesn't mean that everybody who uses one of these lines fits this profile. So to discuss personality, I'll be using the five-factor model, right? So openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism, easily remembered through the acronym OCEAN. So with the flippant category, this tends to convey, as I mentioned before, kind of a little bit of arrogance, maybe points a little bit to narcissism. We see here generally low openness to experience, low conscientiousness, high extroversion, and low neuroticism. So I think kind of a challenging combination when looking for a long-term relationship with a person. And this is again consistent with what we see in the research literature. 
With the direct category, I would think mid to high openness to experience, high conscientiousness, mid to low extroversion, mid agreeableness, mid-range agreeableness, and mid to low neuroticism. So really a fairly good combination if somebody's looking for a long-term relationship, again consistent with what we see in the research. I actually think this is the best category in terms of that personality matching up with someone who would be committed to a long-term relationship. Then we see innocuous. So with innocuous we see low extroversion, high agreeableness, and high neuroticism. So somebody who really lacks confidence, maybe a little bit avoidant. This, of course, is the most preferred category, as I mentioned before. For women, it's the most preferred. For men, actually, direct is the most preferred, and innocuous comes in second. But again, we see very little research on this, so we're basing it on a very small sample size when talking about men being the person receiving the pickup line. But either way, I think we still see some difficulties here with innocuous because of the high agreeableness, right? That's the one, I think, that really stands out. Because you see somebody who's really trusting, maybe a little bit dependent, and someone who's really worried about being rejected. That's why they're approaching with a line that's so non-committal, right? That line is so, well, innocuous that you don't know what's coming next. Nothing could come next, right? Or some sort of conversation. So I actually think, again, it's a little bit Machiavellianistic. It's like sneaking in a little bit. So it's like hiding the true intent and then kind of moving in through a circuitous route. So I'm not a big fan of it, but if we look at the research literature again, it is the one most favored by women. It tends to be the one most favored by women. So I know whenever I talk about topics like this, there'll be a variety of opinions. And I think with this particular topic, it would be interesting if you had a pickup line in mind and wanted to share that. I think that would create an interesting dialogue. And of course, if you have any other opinions and thoughts, please put those in the comments as well. As always, I hope you found this description of pickup lines to be interesting. Thanks for watching.